Stuart, can you, do you remember the time when you got your first guitar? Can I remember the time when I forgot my first guitar? Remember. Do I remember? Yes. Yes, I do remember. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, sure. I was 11 years old, but it was Christmas. How it was you? actually uh, given to me as a gift by my next door neighbour, and it was a 350-year-old classical guitar. Was it acoustic? Yes, it was a classical acoustic guitar. Do you remember what brand it was? No, I don't remember what brand it was, no. At the age of 11, I don't think you're really uh, of an age where you can appreciate an instrument like that, unfortunately. How did you feel when you got your what, classical guitar? I was very excited. Yeah. Well, I couldn't actually play a guitar at that time, so, you know, it was... Uh, I said the first instrument that I ever that I ever had. Unfortunately, I was at an age where I couldn't really appreciate an instrument here, an instrument of that quality. I was residing in. Um, I was from the middle of England, uh, from the Midlands, uh, Sheffield, and most of the music scene was uh, located down further down south, London. The capital, mm -hmm. the capital of England. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, we uh, in the Midlands we weren't as exposed to uh, the live music scene as much as what was happening in London. It was basically what you heard on the radio or what you saw on the TV. My music teacher, actually, when I was uh, when I was at school, he uh, he instilled an interest in uh, in music uh, music for me, but mainly classical music at that time. I was really only interested in classical music. I didn't really follow popular music or such. When did you uh, start listening to rock music? I probably have to say when I was about 13, 14. What sparked your interest in, in that music? What sparked my interest yeah, in that music? Yeah, to rock music. <coughs> I was mainly interested uh, or influenced by uh, blues, blues players of the time, uh, John Mayall. Was one of my favourite uh, was one of my favourite blues guitarists, and um, when I was much younger, I went to one of his concerts in Sheffield. I found that really good, and that sort of spurred me on to uh, continue with studies in music. Why blues? I mean, there were jazz. There was um, I think there was jazz in, in the sixties as well, and probably well, there, well, there, well, there was. And, but well, let's face it, you know, most most rock music is sort of uh, it, its roots are, are based in blues. So, uh, you know, that's a good place to be. If you want to play rock and roll, study blues, because that's where it all began, really. Yeah. So, in a sense, were you self-taught? Yes. You were? Yes. How did that feel? Like, I wasn't self-taught, I was taught by you, you yeah. know? Uh, how do you mean? How did that like, feel? Like, is that is it hard? I I mean, to is, you have motivate. You need motivation. You you right? obviously need yeah. m motivation. You you don't have anybody still sort of standing behind you or standing over you, telling you that you, you know you have to do this, you have to do that. But um, it has it has its shortfalls. It has its shortfalls in as much as uh, any habits that you you, you do sort of uh, have. Uh, you tend to develop those habits because you're self-taught, which means yeah. that uh, you know you, you do have sort of uh, things holding you back uh, in in that respect. Um, but you know, it's part and parcel of uh, learning an instrument. Australia when I was about 17, um, I seriously, because I could no longer uh, or didn't want to continue with the profession that I had in, uh, in England, I decided to uh, make music uh, my profession, so uh, obviously my studies in music were quite uh, intense for two years, mm. uh, from se the age of 17 to 19, and then I uh, joined my first 
first band, which fortunately for myself was uh, quite a popular band, uh, Threshold. Uh, they were handled by Australian Entertainment Exchange in Australia and um, did quite well. Uh, supported quite a lot of uh, uh, local and national acts and a couple of international acts as well. Um, the band did very, very well. I was with them for probably a period of about two years. A lot of musicians will say that they are professional musicians, but generally, you know, they, they haven't got two, uh, two coins to rub together. Uh, they're totally broke, starving, uh, don't have a roof over their head, and yet they call themselves musicians. A musician is a profession, and, and a profession means that you're actually making a living out of that profession. In other words, you can support yourself, clothe yourself, play your bills, rent, etc., etc. Um, yeah. What do you mean when you say music is an addiction? When I say addiction, I should probably replace that word with obsession. Most musicians are obsessed. They're obsessed because they they want to they want to create they want to create pieces of music, and they want to take them to the highest level that they can possibly take them. And uh, it's something that never never leaves your mind. Your music will never leave your mind. It's there with you 24 hours a day. So hence the reason I use the word addiction. I should probably use the word obsession. What kind of advice can you give to aspiring musicians or artists that want to follow their ambitions or dreams? Be persistent. <laughs> Persistence is the only thing that will pay off. Um, you know, I, I've, I've met so many people over the years that have uh, worked hard, tried to get you know, their music out there and happening, and it hasn't happened, and they've said, well, I quit. It's a shame because all the times that things have gone wrong for them and they've got up and they've started again, that's, that, that, that's the persistence that I'm talking about. It's like anything in life, you know, you get knocked down and get up. If you don't get up, nobody's going to pick you up. You've got to pick yourself up. So, you know. Wait.